So one of the things I get asked a lot is how do I make fur look soft? So you can see on this side of the cat I've started to work the fur more where I've laid a lot of layers in and it looks softer than this side of the cat. So what I usually do is I just kind of lay down some color like I have here. It looks a little rough and then I'll take either a white or maybe um, something really light like I have a pencil that's like a beige color or ivory and I'll just kind of go over it and it just make the the strokes go the same way the fur does and I'll just go over all the colors that I have put down and kind of blend them all out so it just kind of softens it and I'll do this several times throughout a drawing so I'll get a layer in don't mind my son, he's playing his video games. I will get a layer in. I'll get some layer of colors down. And then I just put the little fur strokes in right over the top. And I'm using fairly hard pressure. I'm not pushing real hard, but definitely more than just a soft touch. I usually use the soft touch for these, these layers, the initial layers. But you can see how it's softening it and what happens is it does mute the color down it takes some of that vibrancy out and so then I'll go back in and add some more color and as I do this um, it just gets more of a softer and softer softer look as I as I get the layers on and really that's how I do it now if I wanted to show fur that was a little more coarse, coarse um, I wouldn't I wouldn't go over it like this I would leave it kind of scraggly looking, but I really want this cat to be fluffy and soft, like you could reach out and pet it. So that's how I do it. Now, always remember too, lighter colors will pull things forward and darker colors will recess them. So if I have fur that's behind something, like in this case right here, this white tuft of fur, the white is going to be in front. It's going to lift forward and look like it's it's closer to you than the shadows will. The darker colors underneath. So it will like that's how you start to get some of the three D look, the three dimensional stuff. It's just by creating those shadows and creating the white or the lighter colors next to it, the mid tones. So if I just go over this. It'll soften it down and then I will go back in and as I do my layers I won't use the white as often and I won't use it as with such hard pressure because I'll want those darker colors to, to be seen I want them to kind of pop through um, but this is the like the on this side of the cat this is the initial first layers so it's okay to go ahead and put some pressure down you don't want to put too much pressure down because then the tooth of the paper will be gone and it will be really hard to lay some more layers in on top um, but you can definitely definitely get a little pressure going you can see how that's see how that's looking softer already just with that one now here I've got this the, on the white is like this really pretty um, yellow brown color so I'm not going to use as much pressure because I really don't want to mute it down that much I really like the the look of it um, so I'm going to soften my touch here and just go over it a little bit lighter than I would these these darker areas over here here I can and what it's doing is it's bringing the white fur forward and taking those other colors and pushing it back and like I said um, I would do I'm going to do this a couple times and really build those colors and those layers up so especially right here Put the white right over here. It's like it's it's very subtle looking. It's like the darker colors are peeking through the white fur. So it's 
comes right over this stripe here and then the really the finishing layers is where you start to get real um, real detailed with individual pieces of fur and stuff and I'll show you that in a minute so I'll go back over here and I'm going to add my some color back in not everywhere I don't need to do it everywhere just in some spots where I want it darker so let me bring the reference photo over and I can show you so for example um, right uh, do I want it here right in here like right in this section it's darker see this so I can go ahead but it's real light over here so I can now that I've muted this out and actually this needs to be even lighter so I'll go back in and really mute this down with the white you can darken this which will instantly if I, when I go and darken this it'll instantly make this look lighter just by adding some dark there it's got a little brown in it so we'll use the um, burnt sienna so if I go in and start to add some more color in here it's gonna make this look lighter see that now I'm using light pressure when I'm adding my color and I'm just putting it in spots I'm not trying to like create a box or you know uh, I want it irregular looking it's fur so I don't want it all straight and perfect so just by adding a little darkness here it lightens this area just by doing that so I don't necessarily have to make this lighter. So sometimes it's just a matter of going back in with some darker pencils and making that more, more of a contrast, getting those shadows in there, those darker areas. And then you don't have to worry about getting it any lighter there. So, and then up in here, I'm gonna go ahead with this and just start to add some more of these, some more of the color in here. And again, as I do this, I'm keeping my strokes kind of apart I don't want them, like I said, I call it tiny soldiers. What you don't want to do is this. You don't want to do straight, straight strokes right next to each other going across, right? That's not really how fur or hair works. You want to have it irregular, like I'm doing here. So you can leave spaces, gaps in between your strokes. Um, and I'm trying to find where I am, sorry. Um, and you want different lengths. You don't want them all even. So, see how just doing that little bit just changes how that fur looks? So just by putting some darker strokes here, it lifts this white area, which makes this white patch of fur look like it's closer to you than what's underneath it, just by doing that. So that's, that's how it works. All right. So that's all I've got. I'm going to um, come back in a little bit and show you over here. I started to add the individual pieces of fur. Can you see that right here? Some of these white pieces. Now this isn't the last step. This is just like a mid step, I guess, because I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is really um, pull these out more. I'm gonna go around them with some color to really define them more, to make them come forward more like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and def define those more, and I still have a lot of work. I don't know if you can see it. See these spots here on the paper? I still have a lot of covering to do. That's paper coming through, so I still have a lot of layers to lay in here yet, even though, even though I could get away with leaving it this way and say it's done. But I don't like that, so I still have quite a bit to do on this side, even though it looks far more finished than that side. And the face, of course, is starting to look really fabulous, but still have some work to do there. But that's how I do soft fur. Thanks, guys.